Hi friends, once again welcome back to my channel Mugambika Nursing. Friends, here we are discussing subject wise questions for ESIC exam preparation. Also, these questions will be helpful for your RRB and other nursing officer exam. In the previous video, we discussed questions from pediatric nursing. Same today, we can see pediatric nursing questions. First question, bulging fontanelles indicate. Options, option A, increased ICP. Option B, hydrocephalus. Option C, A and B. Option D, dehydration. Bulging fontanelles means there is a chance of increased ICP and also hydrocephalus. ICP means intracranial pressure. So, answer will come both A and B. Option C, dehydration. In case of dehydration, there is a depressed fontanelles can see fontanelles anterior fontanelles and posterior fontanelles are there anterior fontanelles is also known as bregma it is diamond in shape it close between 12 to 18 months of age posterior fontanel is also known as lambda and it is triangular in shape and it close between 2 to 3 months of age on to the next question. Cracked port sound on percussion over the hydrocephalus baby is called. Options. Option A. Kerning sign. Option B. Chadwick sign. Option C. McGowan sign. Option D. Homan sign. In hydrocephalus baby, while doing percussion over the head, there is a cracked port sound will heard. That is known as McGowan sign. Option C is the correct answer. First option, kerning sign. It is the positive sign of meningitis. And option B, Chadwick sign is also known as Jacome sign. It is the dusky hue, vestibule and anterior vaginal wall which is visible at 8th week of pregnancy. And Hopman sign, option D is positive in case of deep vein thrombosis. Hopman sign. Move on to the next question. Which is the most appropriate diagnostic test to find out phrenic nerve paralysis? Options. Option A. Bronchoscopy. Option B. Chest X-ray. Option C. Fluoroscopy. Option D. CT. Question. Most appropriate diagnostic test to identify phrenic nerve paralysis. It is fluoroscopy. Option C is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Encephalitis is one of the complications of options. Option A. Rubella. Option B. Varicella. Option C. Pertussis. Option D. Diphtheria. Encephalitis. Encephalitis means it is the infection of the brain. It occurs due to the complication of which infection? Either rubella or varicella or pertussis or diphtheria. It is due to the infection of varicella. Option B is the correct answer. It is one of the viral infection. And the next question, oxygen toxicity in preterm baby cause. Options. Option A. Retrorendal fibroplasia option b respiratory as distress option c neonatal sepsis and option d all of this in case of preterm baby excess oxygen that is oxygen toxicity will leads to retrolendal fibroblasia option a is the correct answer retrolendal fibroblasia is also known as retinopathy of prematurity Move on to the next question. In newborn, hearing assessment is done by options. Option A, tuning fork test. Option B, bone conduction test. Option C, BERA. Option D, audiometer test. In newborn baby, hearing assessment is done with the help of brainstem evoked a response auditory. That is BERA. Brainstem evoked response auditory which will help to identify the brain wave activity to certain tunes okay so can assess the hearing ability of a new newborn move on to the next question correct method of holding the pinna while administering ear drops in children's options option a upward and backward Option B, downward and backward. Option C, backward only. Option D, downwards only. Here the question, correct method of holding the pinna 
while giving or while administering ear drops in children in children hold the pinna downward and backward but in case of adult we have to hold the pinna upward and backward in children downward and backward in adult upward and backward move on to the next question flat sign is the characteristic features of options option a poliomyelitis option b kosciorkar option c marasmus option d erickets flat sign is one of the feature of kosciorkar kosciorkar is a protein a deficiency disorder move on to the next question which is the most common congenital abnormality in a baby of diabetic mother options option a ventricular septal defect option b anencephaly option c respiratory distress option d all of this is question common congenital abnormality in a baby of diabetic mothers which one is the congenital abnormality can occurs in baby who is born in diabetic mother it is ventricular septal defect option a is the correct answer move on to the next question infantile diarrhea is commonly caused by options option a adenovirus option b rotavirus option c e coli option d pseudomonas infantile diarrhea is commonly associated or commonly caused by rotavirus option b is the correct answer and most common cause of bacterial diarrhea in children is e coli move on to the next question what clinical manifestation of tetralogy of palate should the nurse expect when caring for a child with this diagnosis here the question what clinical manifestation can expect by a nurse while caring a child with tetralogy of palate okay the main clinical manifestation of tetralogy of palate that is the question the main manifestation in case of tetralogy of palate in children's include increased cyanosis cyanosis means bluish discoloration of the body mainly due to decrease oxygen in the body and also clubbing of fingers poor growth then squatting all seen in case of tetralogy of palate so here in our option clubbing of fingers is there because of the hypoxia developed in the children's body that can lead to clubbing of fingers option b is the correct answer tetralogy of palate include mainly four defect first one is ventricular septal defect second one is pulmonary stenosis third one is overriding of aorta and fourth one is right ventricular hypertrophy move on to the next question a child undergo heart surgery to prepare the defect associated with tetralogy of palate what behavior is essential to prevent post operative period options option a crying option b coughing option c straining at stool option d unnecessary movement here the question is a child undergone surgery for tetralogy of palate among this option which behavior or which activity is essential to prevent completely during post operative period first option crying crying is not a serious problem for after the surgery and coughing coughing and deep breathing can do after this surgery after tetralogy of palate surgery but straining at the stool should be completely avoided during post operative period because forceful evacuation and taking deep breath which may lead to increase intra thoracic pressure which may lead to straining on the heart sutures so in order to avoid straining on the heart sutures we should completely avoid straining at stool option c is the correct answer move on to the next question a 5 month old infant develops severe diarrhea and give iv fluids what is the rational for the nurse to closely monitor the iv flow rate options option a replacing lost fluids option b limiting output option c avoid iv infiltration option d preventing cardiac overload here the question is a 5 month old infant is receiving iv fluid for the treatment of diarrhea 
and question what is the rational what is the reason behind the nurse is closely monitor the iv flow rate so while giving iv fluid to 5 month old infant the nurse should closely monitoring the flow rate what is the reason that is the question so it is mainly to prevent cardiac overload if we are giving too fast it may cause fluid overload to the baby in order to prevent that we have to closely monitor the iv fluid first option are replacing lost fluid so after diarrhea we have to slowly replace the iv fluid that is a necessary thing and limit output output is not a primary concern after diarrhea or patient or infant with diarrhea and avoid iv infiltration this is also important thing but the main thing is to prevent cardiac overload here priority wise we have to answer this question on to the next question for how long should a nurse maintain isolation of a child with bacterial meningitis options option a 12 hours after admission option b until the culture are negative option c until antibiotic therapy is completed option d for 48 hours after antibiotic therapy begins here the question how long how much time the nurse should keep isolation for a child with bacterial meningitis and the correct answer is for 48 hours antibiotic therapy begins okay so till 48 hours after antibiotic therapy begins on to the next question what does the nurse determines the most serious complication of meningitis in young children options option a epilepsy option b blindness option c peripheral circulatory collapse option d communicating hydrocephalus question which one is the most serious complication of meningitis in young children it is peripheral circulatory collapse or waterhouse friderichsen syndrome waterhouse friderichsen syndrome or peripheral circulatory collapse is the most serious complication after meningitis in young children option c is the correct answer on to the next question the best position for examination of cardiac murmur in a child is option option a sitting option b standing option c right lateral option d left lateral here the question which one is the best position for examining a child with cardiac murmur it is standing position option b is the correct answer move on to the next question drug of choice in trachoma in children's is options option a tetracycline option b ceftriaxone option c phenobarbital option d indomethacone which drug can give in case of trachoma in children it is oral tetracycline option a is the correct answer oral tetracycline can give to children but it is not given in case of infants and young children and the next question clumps palsy is due to the injury at options option a c4 to c5 option b c5 to c6 option c c6 to c7 option d c7 to c8 that is cervical 7 to cervical 8 clumps palsy occurs due to the injury to cervical 7 to cervical 8 option d is the correct answer clumps palsy is one of the type of birth injury which occurs at the injury occurs at the level of c7 to c8 and t1 level okay this is an important question and another one birth injury is x palsy it occurs at the level of c5 to c6 level this is also important point so far here we discussed questions from pediatric nursing surely this questions will helpful for your exam preparation if it is useful for your studies please share my videos to your friend circle